Hi. Good morning. I have a quick video, hopefully, that I want to do for you that's uh, related to a uh, workshop that I just did, uh, that I just prepared for, um, put this together, and it's called Flow. And the idea is to help use um, ideas of physics and fluid dynamics to help us understand how our own relationships work with the world, because uh, humans are particles moving in a wave of society, in a wave of, of social interaction. Uh, so it actually is appropriate, scientifically, from what I, what I see, to, you know, to actually talk about physics, humans as being physical objects moving through a space. So this is my first little thing I want to show you. Um, some of you may recognize these, some of you may not. They're a little bit like Legos or Tinker Tots in that, you know, there's some holes in these things and there's some little connector things. And, you know, what, what most people tend to do with these is, you know, you put a connector in and then you connect it to something else, right? And then you can build all kinds of structures and things with these. Well, what is this, right? What is this thing? This is a relationship, right? And why do we naturally want to connect these things together? You know, why do we naturally pick up one and take a connector and put it into a hole and connect it to another one? Why is that, why is that normal for us? <laughs> you know, what does that, what does that mean? I mean, it's just obvious, right? But it's not obvious when it's on a more complicated scale of a human. It's not obvious that you want to find someone who has something you need to put in, into you, to give you something. This is an input and output relationship. First, First, someone inputs something, they find something that works for them, and they input it, and it makes them whole, and it makes them more than whole. It makes them, you know, expressive, it makes them want to create something and put something out that they can give to someone else, and they find someone else who needs that and that it fits with, right? But it's not obvious when we're out in the real world as real human beings in a complex society that we want to find things that work for us. I mean, we kind of know that. You know, we want what we want. We want good things. We want to be happy. We want to be comfortable. But we don't always realize that we can't always input and output the things that are right in front of us. For example, this individual here has no more holes. There's no more input needed on this one. But this this one, this person, this molecule, wants to output something. And no matter what it does, it's not going to fit. But that's what we try so often to do. We try to find people around us and push what we have to offer onto them when they don't actually want it and they don't need it. Or vice versa, we try to get something from someone else. Say this person wants to get something from this person, but neither of them have anything to offer one another. They, they, there's no connector, there's no excess that this one has to offer this one. So we need to be a little more aware of where we're directing our energy and when we're, where we're asking for things so that Instead of when we're ready to output something, we're not outputting it in a direction that no one wants. There's no one ready here for whatever this is. This person's looking for something that goes that way. This person's looking to output something. But if we do a little bit of a dance and we look around and we wander around, 
we might find that now, going in a different direction, maybe looking for a different person in a different time, in a different place, that what we have to offer is exactly what they need. And they're very happy with it. And this is part of flow. Things can't flow when they're, you know, all jumbled up. A liquid is actually not a gas. A gas does kind of flow, but liquids flow way better, right? Solids don't flow at all. Gases move around, but they, they don't flow so well. They need a lot of energy to be pushed around um, in a specific pattern. Otherwise, they just kind of scatter, you know. They just get blown around in all different directions, right? That's what the wind does. The wind goes in all different directions, but a river or uh, raindrops, they all kind of go together. They all kind of work together. And that's because they're partly connected. That water is very self-adhesive. Water sticks together a lot. These are actually uh, the things that I was showing you before. These are actually models of molecules. And, um, wait, no, not that one. Uh, oh, I forget which one is. is uh, where's oxygen? Red. Red is oxygen. There we go, too. Um, liquid, especially water, which is H2O, which is this. They're, they're kind of connected. These are connected together really well. The hydrogen and the oxygen, and they bond together really well, and they create a much more... Um, stable molecule that kind of works together with other water molecules. So yeah, so flow is when you connect with others in a way that supports them. So whatever you're offering, you find someone, you move around, you explore, and you find someone who actually wants not necessarily exactly, but almost what you're offering. It's not an absolute perfect fit, but it's pretty close. Or if you need something, if you need something, you gotta kind of look around and find someone who has something to offer that fits what you need as well as possible. Not perfectly, but really well. And the more we do this, the more we realize that in our immediate environment, we might not find someone who wants what we're offering and might not find someone who's offering what we want. But if we look around a little bit more, if we explore a little bit more and keep an open mind and be creative, maybe we can find a good match. And then things can just kind of flow together more easily. And it gives us more power because we're not struggling so much. We're able to express what we want to express and we're able to get what we want to get. And other people are able to get what they want to get and express what they want to express. And it's just a matter of, it's like a puzzle. It's like a matter of finding the things that fit together. And if things aren't fitting well, that's okay. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with either of you. It's just a different match. It's not the right time, it's not the right place, and it may be not the right person, but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with it. So it's a matter of timing and exploring and finding the right direction to go to find the individuals who want what you have to offer and who have to offer what you want. And that's what I call flow. And the more we focus on not just what we want, but what other people want, the more successful we'll be in finding individuals to flow with, to go with. Okay? Thank you. Bye. I wish you well flowing. Good luck. I will be in love again. I will be in love. 
When the rain comes in broken skies, I'll be your love again. In the garden, there's a man with the sun on his shoulder, with the sun on his shoulder, like a feathered friend, and he stands behind. I'm sorry for it all. The push, the shove, the fall. And I will be in love again. I will be. Skies, I will be alive again. In the garden, there's a man with a son for a father, with a son for a father, like a faithful friend, and he stands up for his love. Forgive them. For it all, the push, the shove, the crawl. And I will be alive again. I will be alive again. When the light comes and broke. Skies, I will be alive again. In America, there's a boy with the sun in his window, with the sun in his window, like a distant star, and he stands in line for love. I wonder. I will be alive.